So no trapeze, but they, they let me bring Play-Doh. Um, and for an ocean engineering major, I never really thought that I'd spend this much of my career playing with Play-Doh. Um, but it's become a really big part of my research lab. You can learn a lot by how people respond to Play-Doh. If you come to a meeting in my office, there's typically some on the desk. And some people jump right in and smile and start sculpting with it and telling me about their childhoods. Other people look at me like I've lost my mind. Um, and those aren't the ones that we typically choose to collaborate with in our lab. Um, because we spent an entire summer taking data on a couple thousand batches of Play-Doh. Um, we ended up with two recipes. And we learned that if we made really salty Play-Doh, it would conduct electricity, not surprising. But if we made really sweet, sugary Play-Doh, it was essentially a resistor, uh, insulator. And if you put those together, we could start sculpting circuitry. Um, we could sculpt working circuitry, right? circuitry that teachers around the world and little kids could build in annoying beeping, beeping and spinning motors with Play-Doh as our circuit boards. Um, Squishy circuits, as we call them, took off sort of beyond our wildest dreams. It was a side project, and now we get emails daily from around the world about people using Play-Doh to teach circuitry to kids of all ages. And it's become probably the most well-known project in our lab, the Playful Learning Lab at the University of St. Thomas. But it's not where our lab started. Um, I get sent this cartoon quite a bit. And as you can read at the bottom, it says, my professors had an ongoing competition to get the weirdest thing taken seriously under the label interdisciplinary program. Um, I, I think I'm in the running for that award. Um, but my point to you today is that you should probably consider how, you know, what you can do for that interdisciplinary program as well. Um, this picture is near and dear to my heart because when I started as a professor in Minnesota back almost 10 years ago, I needed to come up with a way to convince my college students to spend four weeks taking an optional class on system dynamics and experimental dynamics and doing Lagrange's equations and motion dynamics um, instead of taking their break for four weeks. And as you can imagine, that's a bit of a tough sell. We also wanted them to meet people that might think of things a little differently than them. Um, and I, I think we came up with a fairly unusual way to do it. We partnered with a local organization, um, which was a certain... I think gravity's got me. and requirements Rigid bodies won't deform till spent All these things I've said You know they're true Am I spinning or is it you? Like a rocket potential energy quickly converts to kinetic me. Star-crossed products meet in reference frames, harmonic motion gain. Office and I have become really good friends over the last couple years. Uh, what came out of this, though, right, was a whole new way of looking at what it would have been students in the basement swinging pendulums. Instead, we made them the pendulums, borrowed motion capture equipment and sensors from every department we could get our hands on, and most importantly, made new friends, right? The engineering students don't typically tr hang out with the circus trainees down the street, but, but they do now, um, which leads to some really interesting combinations. Right? And one of the messages that I get out of projects like this is that you really can plant seeds for serendipity. We think that innovation happens sort of magically and you know, hopefully people meet the right people. But in my lab, my role and some of the senior students' role is to create those moments. You know, how do we find those unusual perspectives that we can combine together, be it the health and human performance department, the local circus school, and the engineering students? I've been to so many conferences where people say that you know, the way to look at your data is to, you know, new is to think like a child. 
um, we've had the advantage of not just thinking like a children, children, but often bringing kids with us into our lab and our projects. Um, I'm, I'm not beyond sneaking four-year-olds onto the bus for the, the junior-level field trips at the college level and having them suddenly realize that their seatmate is four years old. And it's pretty amazing what happens when you start trying to explain your complicated projects to preschoolers. They're roofless, they're harder graders than I am. And you inevitably learn something new when you're trying to talk to someone who has a completely different reference frame than you do. Um, this, is, this is a four-year-old from the local preschool and one of my college students trying to explain forces and pulleys. And you quickly figure out who understands what they're really talking about. It's often the four-year-old. Leaving your comfort zone adds new perspectives and skills. We figured we were pretty good at cooking because we can make a lot of Play-Doh on our hot plates in the lab. Um, so we, we maybe a little naively took on a project recently. This is one of my students, Rachel, um, in a borrowed agriculture lab. Right? We, we bring our knowledge of engineering and circus and Play-Doh, but we, we've started working with chefs on ways of rethinking food and also looking at their ingredients. Um, we're working with a restaurant group in Chicago, um, and this is not circus data, right? But some of the same students that may have been working on a circus project or may have been mixing Play-Doh are now putting their minds towards looking at, in this case, uh, gas chromatograph and mass spectroscopy data, trying to figure out if we can judge the quality of certain really expensive ingredients, much more expensive than my Play-Doh. Um, and those like, unexpected partners, when I have these students who are 20, 21, 22, who are learning to look at things for the first time, instead of just seeing other engineers and hearing things presented the same way they've heard over and over, um, when, we, when we go outside of our box and find new partners, we bring a new set of eyes, um, or, or in this case, a new set of noses. Um, you know, calling chefs in Chicago at Michelin-rated restaurants and asking them to sniff truffles, you start to realize that people and, people and machines see data very differently. So what we've learned, though, is that once you say yes to that first unusual project, and yes, everyone rolls their eyes the first time you announce to the university that you're taking the engineers and sticking them 40 foot up on a trapeze, um, and I really do know the safety office quite well, the second, third, tenth project become easier. People want to play. People want to laugh. They want to find some new way of looking at things. Um, and thanks to this, you know, the engineering students don't scoff when they suddenly walk into their first week of their required class and find out they're dancing with you know, a French choreographer, and that that could one day lead to a nationally touring dance piece. Right. Because what I've learned in these projects is no matter how good our sensors are, no matter how good our data is, your product and your analysis is only as good as your team. Um, I wasn't kidding. If you come to my office, there's always a toy or Play-Doh on the desk um, because you learn a lot from that. Usually the people even know that we, we do squishy circuits, and I've still had other respected engineering professors look at it and say, why would you do this? Right? And we don't want to play with the people who would ask why you would do this. We want to play with the people that would laugh and figure out what else could you do with it. Because that new insight is going to come from the four-year-old, or it is going to come from that unusual collaboration with someone that you haven't thought of working with before. Um, I, I'm pretty fortunate that I, that I have a team of students that are willing to take on these challenges. But as you look at the amazing things you'll see over the next couple of days, you know, think about whose perspective you could bring in and what maybe unusual techniques you could put into the mix. Um, I, I promise you'll see something new if you look at it with a different set of eyes or nose. Thank you.